I think all the other skaters, uh, I think they have the pressure because uh, when they saw the Liu brothers, uh, they started to they start thinking like, ah, oh, I, I have no more chance. This week on Up Again, the show about overcoming life's challenges on and off the ice, we are bringing you a double helping of ice skating talent. The Liu brothers, Sha Lin and Sha Ang, supreme talents in the world of short track speed skating. Uh, they've turned Hungary into a powerhouse of the sport. They won gold at the Olympic Games in Pyeongchang in the men's relay. And they are here to share all of what they've learned and what they've got planned for the future. Welcome to the show, guys. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Okay, so Shalin and Shaang, you don't live together anymore, but you used to, right? Yeah, like we are brothers, so we used to live together. And yeah, we moved separate like two and a half years ago. So three after the Olympic ago. Games, yeah. Uh, yeah. After the Games. Yeah, we had, uh, had enough of each other. So, so we, are, we, we are moved separate, but I'm living on a fifth floor and my um, Shawang is living on a ground floor. So, so we are a few. Not too far. You know? Yeah, not too far. We would like to have like our own separate life, but still together if, if we need something from each other. Yeah, and um, is that a gaming chair? What is that red and black sticking out behind you, Shaang? I mean this one. Yes. Yeah, this one is my gamer chair. So oh. we used to play a lot of video games uh, in our free time. So yeah, we are like, not we are not kind of nerds, but... Uh, if we have some spare time, we, we would like to play uh, a lot of a lot of video games. Who's better? I think I am the better one because uh, I used to play more. I think. Yeah, I used to study. No, just kidding. <laughs> but like, yeah, he he's much better, much better player than me. But we're not not always playing the same games, so he's he's playing different games. So so that's why that's why he's a little bit better. Okay, obviously loads of competitive spirit, I assume. So probably a good thing that you're not playing the same games, considering you're doing the same thing in real life all the time and you travel together and you, I mean, you used to live together. That is a lot of togetherness right there. I've got a sibling and I love her to bits, but I think we would have nuclear meltdowns on a regular basis if we had to spend as much time together as you guys do. Um, let's rewind back though to before you guys took to the ice and became the superstars that you are now. How did it happen that you first went skating? Did you always skate as kids? Was this something that was kind of part of what you, you did as a family, Shalin? Well, not really. If my answer should be straight, I would say no, because my, my father is a painter and my mom was just like at home with us and like looking after us and like trying to raise us, more or less. Uh, but like, yeah, we, my father always wanted to go to the art part. Like we, we had a piano at home and they always wanted to us to play piano, but we didn't really like it. And my dad tried to, tried to teach us paint painting but we we hated it like yeah like we didn't like it we couldn't sit next to each other for over two minutes because we have like two and a half years different between us and we were always playing and always like trying to fight each other and the parents are like oh it's not working we couldn't we can't put the two kids to bed so what what, what should we do so the the swimming and water polo is it's it's huge in Hungary. Like we have like loads of gold medals from from the games. And uh, we started with swimming, but we didn't re we didn't do as well. And we always get sick from the water. And like we wanted to switch something. And the winter came. We never heard about any winter sports. And we looked up, and somehow we found short track speed skating. So you 
you have a Hungarian mom and a Chinese dad and you're born in Hungary, you live there and then you start showing a bit of promise as far as skating is concerned and then you just off to China for a year. How did that move uh, come about? I think it was 2016. Uh, here was a, a world championship in, in Budapest in Hungary. And um, we were there like as kids, just watch the, watch the race. Uh, and we were just running around the ice ring. We, we, we were just watching the, the big guys, the, the big idols. Uh, uh, and there was a Chinese team. And uh, my father had a really, they just met and they, they had a good relationship afterwards. And, um, and uh, the Chinese, with the, with the Chinese team leader, and uh, he, uh, she said like, uh, hey, you should take the guys to China to train with us. Like they could get much better, like in, a, in, in like, just like years. And, and my father just had, had this idea, just, uh, well, yeah, we, we should take the kids to China and, and they, they should try to, to train. Like, we can take this serious. And, uh, and after just like all, like everything just changed in our life because we went to China for one and a half year. And, and like, yeah, there's a different culture. We, we never been there. Like the, the food is different. Like the ice rink is different. The people is different. So we, I think we really had to, to grow up for, for what we were about there because like we were kids like outside in China and our parents went back to Hungary uh, but like we had to grow up like uh, this is serious like we have to take this chance now and this could change our life so it was a pretty, pretty like life-changing time I think in our life. So what did you just basically go to ice skating boarding school they just went with you dropped you off and said bye bye we'll see you in a while? Yeah, kind of like that. <laughs> that, that, would, that would be a little bit simple, but like, you know, like just like in China, they just drop you in a college and, and like just going to training, going to school and like, and then going, going back to the college and sleep. And like, like, first of all, my, for, for the first half year, my mom came with us, but she was, she had enough, like she, for her, it, like, like, like what Xiaoang said, like the culture and the people and the food was different. Like, mm -hmm. Obviously, my, my father was like giving us the Chinese culture, like cooking Chinese food. We went to like Chinese comedy in Hungary, but it was still different. Like it's not, you know, like there's a Chinese restaurant in, in all around the world. But like if you go to China, you eat Chinese, like in Chinese Chinese. <laughs> like when you say you go out, like ow, ow. <laughs> You're like, you know, you know that, you know that. And, uh, and my mom for her, it was, it was, it was different. Like she's like a Hungarian from a small village in, in, in Hungary and, and, uh, and she moved to China. Like we moved to Changchun. It's up north, I think. I don't know. I'm not really good with that. Uh, I, I read that your accents in Mandarin are Northeastern. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so yes. we went up Northeast and, uh, and, uh, yeah, it was like at the winter, it was like minus 25 degrees. So it's in Celsius. So, so it was freezing cold and like, and my mom wasn't used to it, but we were little kids and we were fun and we were happy. We wanted to improve and my, and my, my family put thousands of dollars in, in, into this sport, their own money. So we had to be there and like to train. So anyone asking us, why are we doing this sport? So I said, my, my parents forced us because they put so much money in there. But yeah, like, you know, it, it was fun at the time. I was 13 now, my Shan Wang was 11. So, so it, it was a fun time. But Shalin, obviously you make loads of sacrifices when you do something like this. I mean, you mentioned that, you know, your parents had to spend a lot of money to take you there. And that is a lot of responsibility to then carry when you're that young. And I'm sure socially it must have been hard uh, because you're also being put to the test in a way that none of your friends back home had to deal with at that age anyway. Well, like, it, it's really funny because I was talking to one of my friends about, about this sacrifice. So like how heavy this word is. Like I didn't make any sacrifice at, at, the, at the moment. Like 
who made sacrifice is my is my parents and 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 my grandparents and like who's like helping us to to do this sport like my mom was giving up her job and she was like flying to us us to china she was making sacrifices but me and xiaolang wasn't like we know like what is the right thing to do like to reach our goals so mm. so we know we know it's like is it like did I make any sacrifice that didn't go to parties or like didn't go out, out to nightclubbing and, and stuff? Did I make sacrifices not to go out with my friends and smoke cigarettes and, or anything? Like, you know, it's, it's not a sacrifice. It's like, it's the right thing to do. It's like what, what you should do, like how you want to become an Olympic champion if you do these things, you know what I, you know what I mean? So, so I wouldn't say sacrifices. I would say we did the right things like who we are today. So what is the, I mean, outside of the food and kind of moving to a place you don't know, that's very cold, loads of kids skating. Um, what was the biggest difference in the experience um, from being back home to then being in China, both physically and also mentally? Shalin, you go first. Like, well, we were skating like two or three times a week in, in, at home. And uh, when we moved there, we were skating twice a day. So, so it, was, it, was, it was a huge difference. Like, we were just like, we had to set an arm at 7, 7 a.m. And like, we wake up and we went to training. And we were like living like two minutes walk from the ice rink. So we were living pretty close. And, and we have to go to trainings, going home, eat, and going back to trainings. And like we had two trainings a day, so it was it was already a huge difference. And the trainings was much the way harder than like what we were expecting, like going there. Yeah, for example, we had to do like ten squats in Hungary, and uh, in China they said you have to do like uh, like hundred or two hundred. So that was already a big difference. Wow. So you, your parents make this big sacrifice. You take on the challenge. You head out to, to China. You spend a year in essentially what sounds like skating boot camp. Then you, come, you, you return home with all of this new insight, everything you've learned, everything you've experienced. What was that homecoming like? It was life-changing. <laughs> It, it was fun to come back, see your grandparents, you know, after a year and like see your, see your other family members. Um, but it was, it was different coming back. Like the trainings was different. The, my, the teammates was a little bit different. You know, everyone changed. Like one, one year in China passed so fast, but like feeling like for other people, it wasn't that fast. And people changed a lot. Like we were still like young kids and like coming back and like playing ahead. Like, like uh, we came home and like we were winning competitions. Like before we were always come last and like like last place and it wasn't so nice. But we came back and I remember Michelle Wang's first race and we went to Slovakia and like there was an age category competition and he was racing with older skate older kids. And uh, he, he was so funny because he loved them. And, uh, and he was so fast, he loved them. And like, they, they thought like he become lost because, because the referees didn't see he, he loved them. So, so it, was, it, was, it was a funny moment. Like we improved so much in China. Uh, when we came back here, yeah, we, we almost, I think we won all the, the small competition in Europe. So that was like already crazy. And uh, all the coaches like saw it and, uh, they were still asking like how they how they do that like how like how they can just like improve that much in in one year yeah wow gosh so now when you look back on it obviously that was was that the defining period in your career or would you say that preparing for pyeongchang and then going and competing and and winning there um i guess the two kind of it's like the the big sacrifice and then the big payoff is that accurate well like we came back in 2008 and we won in pyeongchang mm. in 2018 so there was 10 mm. years uh, to go and like to talk about but 
yeah, like we came home, we were winning like age groups and competitions, so small competitions, like like uh, competition series, and and it was it was fun to compete there, and um, and I, I started skating World Cups in 2011 or 2012. I'm not not really sure, but. Like that was the real world. Like, yeah, you were winning competitions, small competitions, but like once you're going out for a for a World Cup, there was a huge whole other level. And we wanted to compete there. We wanted to win there, but like we feel like if we still train here, we can't really improve. So we wanted to change something. Like other European countries was inviting foreign coaches from Asia, and they started to improve. And we wanted to invite another a coach as well from Korea, but I, we said, my father said like, hey, we have a Chinese coach who we know and, and she want to move from China. Like, what you think? Should we try? And uh, luckily we took the chance and we invited our coach. We call her Lina and she was our coach back 2007. So, so she came to Hungary and like, we started working together again. It was it was so much fun. Like we started to improve again from 2012. So Lina comes over and she lights a fire, and you guys start raising the level at which you're competing. Um, obviously, that did so much for everyone around you in Hungary. I assume because you guys are kind of setting the pace, but it also raises the standard of you know, the, the environment, and everyone knows Hungary hasn't won gold at the Winter Olympics, but now there must have been such a buzz around the two of you competing the way you did, having this Chinese coach come in. How exciting was that time? It was, it was fun. Um, well, obviously, Shawang was much younger, and... Mm. Um, we were start working and you know it was 2012 so there was two years to go to 2040 in sochi and i was i was 18 at the time in sochi so i went there i competed there it was it was fun um i was so nervous i didn't have any chance to to do really good but i was still nervous and my it was my first games and uh and i wanted to show something but i didn't have it in me yet so so it was a good experience um if i have to if i would have to remember back to any any of my races i would say i can't not because like it was a long time ago because it was i was so stressed and so nervous you know to to going to an olympic and and be there and like such a big thing like fighting for your dreams and you are there and like and be there so so it's a, it's a really nice thing and um I think our biggest improvement started after Sochi. Okay. I think it started around like uh, after the games, it was 2015, 2014. Uh, I think when uh, I think when we won the first World Cup medal with the, with the team, I think it was in Montreal, 2014. And um, and after like like uh, something changed. Like we were like thinking about like oh yeah now. Like we have, we have the chance now to to do something, to prove something on the on the games, the big games, the Olympic games, and uh, we were from 2014. We were like uh, uh, taking uh, uh, medals from all kind of uh, uh, races, like from the Europeans, from the World Championship, from from World Cups, and um, we were getting closer to 2018. And uh, we we just said, oh, yeah, we have the chance now, and uh, we can do this like uh we can get medals we can we can prove something here there was a it's amazing that belief that just starts taking hold and particularly considering what you just said about 2014 and just being so you know almost like a deer in the headlights at your first game shalin yeah like there was there was a huge game changer before that when we get on the track uh there was like 12,000 people on the track on, on the on the ice rink and uh I don't think I could hear the coaches uh, or they were shouting. Um, but like when I was skating, I, I felt like uh, I had it in myself. Everything was like so like comfortable and uh, like everything just came so naturally. Uh, it was our last race. 
uh, on the last day. And uh, uh, the, the races before the, before the relay doesn't really, like, it didn't go well. Like, uh, I got three times uh, penalty and uh, Shaolin uh, fell on the, no, he didn't make it in the, in the 500 meter and uh, he got fifth. Uh, so he also missed the medal uh, in, in, on, the, on the 500 meter. And so when we got on the track in the relay, it was our, it was our last race uh, on the last day. So we didn't have like too much pressure. It was like, okay, guys, we have to go on the ice. We, have, we can do this. Uh, this is our last chance. Um, and when I was skating, I felt everything like was super like normal and, and like chill. And uh, the way I, I passed the, the, the Chinese team and the Canadian team, it, it felt like so naturally. And, and, and I don't know from inside, I felt like it's like everything is going in slow mo. Like, like, the, like how, how, I, how I skate, how I put my, put my legs to the next and how I use my arms. Like everything felt like super slow. And uh, it felt like not easy, but like it was inside in me. I don't know if it's like clearly or not, but I, I felt like this way. So psychologists uh, describe this as being in flow where everything just, it's, it's like you're just almost a passenger in the experience where it's just, just coming so naturally and it's just feeling like it's like you're in this moment. Was that how you experienced it, Shaolin? Well, like just how Shaolang said, like we had individual races before the relay and the relay was the last distance and the last day. So, so mainly we were focusing on the, on the, um, on the individual races, obviously. And, uh, and there was the 500 at the same day and, uh, and I was skating the semi-final. My blade was broke. I was, I uh, kicked the blade with Samuel Girard and we, we both broke our blades, so we were skating our spare blades, and um, and uh, yeah, I couldn't make it to the final, so that was a huge disappointment for me. Like I went into a dressing room, I was I was only about to ski the B final, which is like from the fifth position to the eighth position. I couldn't fight for the medal anymore, you know. So it was it was a it was a hard time for me. Uh, I didn't really want to go on and I didn't really want to skate the B final. So, and I was like, why would I skate the B final? I didn't come for the B final. I, I came for the A final, you know. Mm. And um, Lena came into her dressing room. She saw me, I was disappointed. She started talking to me and like putting my head together and, and going up. And, and she said, go on, win the B final and like we're going to win the relay as well. So I stood up. My... Uh, my teammates was a little bit worried about me and 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 I and I stood up and I told them like okay guys I'm gonna go on and I'm gonna win the B final we come off I, I come off and we're gonna win the relay as well I was really lucky because I won the B final as <laughs> it would be too cocky to say I like, I'm gonna win the B final and like become last you know it would it would be funny but I win the B final and uh, and my brother was playing songs in the in a dressing room he's always about his job always to put the best songs and like there is like songs for for teams who we skate with and and we we just like play those songs and the last song was like we are the champion and from queen and um it was when we were about about to walk out to the field and uh, we opened the door and the, we, there was a really loud music going on and we are we are the champions and and then, like we, we could like imagine like in slow mo and like smoke coming out behind us and like walking how yeah like exactly how are you dating it and uh, and yeah it was it was it was a, a really nice moment just like we could fit in a fit in a movie and uh, and we came out and there was like yeah twelve thousand people it was full like the korean people love this sport in beijing it's gonna be even bigger so we are we are really exciting but i will talk about that later and uh and yeah like i said to i said to the teammates like there is twelve thousand people and everyone is watching us everyone is chewing for us and like how shang Lang said like people were so loud you know there is a bell like at the last lap and I couldn't hear the bell at the last lap. So it was, it was, it was really historical. It was really emotional 
for the whole race. There was a lot of actions going on. It was it was a really exciting race. I'm I'm glad we won. I'm I'm really happy. Well, it seems like it was destined. I mean, I could I could totally when you were telling that story, I could totally imagine you guys strutting out of that room like ready to just own this race. So let's talk about Beijing because you just mentioned Beijing. That is, I mean, you couldn't have planned this better. You won gold in Pyeongchang, the first time ever that Hungary wins gold at a Winter Olympic Games. And the 2022 Games, where are they hosting it? In China. There you go. It's a pleasure. Tell me about preparing for Beijing 2022 and what this Olympic Games will mean to you. Let's start with you, uh, Shalin. Well, like, when we were younger, like, it wasn't really clear for people like, did we born here or born in China and, and moved here and, and stayed for Hungary? But like, there was like many interviews where they asked like, how is it feeling going back to race in China at your home crowd? And I was like, that's not really my home crowd. I was born here, I was raised here. And I was like, yeah, my father is Chinese, but like I, was, I wasn't living there so much to, to feel like a home crowd. But the, after these few years, like start feeling like China is kind of a home crowd for us as well. And, and like some people asking like how you feel like racing in China. I, uh, like now I say like, yeah, I'm, I'm going half home or, or home to race and, and people is gonna cheer for me. Like 1.4 million people, people gonna cheer for the Leo brothers. And that's how, we, that's how motivated we are. And that's how much we wanna win. Like we are still young. And we are hungry. We know the taste of the Olympic gold medal. So, so we are hungry for more and, and we are train, train hard. Shawang? Of course, uh, we work a lot. Uh, we, still wanna, we still wanna prove the word like uh, we can get there. And uh, uh, it was a pretty tough time for us. I think um, the 2019 and 2012 uh, uh, because of the COVID, um we had to we had to go up down up down like, like a roller coaster um like uh, mentally and physically it changed us because yeah we we couldn't like train as as how we planted we we couldn't go to to training camps we had to stay at home uh so there was a lockdown twice uh we had to we had a huge break uh so yeah it, it was a it was a pretty hard pretty tough time but uh we were still preparing for for the for the big games because we are thinking about oh every, every time we think about the olympic games not not just at the at that competition at the moment so so we are really like thinking forward like uh we are, we try to plan for, forward to the games and um i think uh, me and shaolin will will do our best uh, when we get on track Shalun, it looks like you're collecting tattoos. I think we're both collecting tattoos. Like, I think, <laughs> think Shalun and I have more tattoos than me. Really. Raise your hands. <laughs> yeah. So, Raise your hands but you that. have, don't you have the chest piece? Like, like you've got... Yeah, we both got a chest piece. But I'm, I'm, oh. I'm posting more a topless picture of myself. Than oh. So that's why, that's why you never see. Is there, is there one that... You now look at and you're like, mm, oh, maybe I shouldn't have gotten that one. Or do you love all of your tattoos? I'm the opposite. Like I look into my mirror and I still I feel like my body can handle more. I need more. My <laughs> body's empty, you know. I, I need I need more on my body. But you know my, my father, like our father is he hated he hate tattoos. He hates tattoos and, and I'm 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 scared to tell him I have more tattoos and I don't show him anymore because he Kissed all the time, and uh, and I'm just seeing tattoos. You know, I'm just like posting on my Instagram. He doesn't have Instagram, so I'm just like I'm just staring in there. But, yeah, that, yeah. We, we love tattoos, and um, I think maybe one day you're gonna see us in, in in a full body tattoo. The problem is now he's in China. Uh, we are not sure when he he's gonna come back to Hungary, but I'm sure when he he coming back to Hungary and he he just looking at us. I think he's gonna be like shocked and uh, he's gonna be so angry. <laughs> but all the all the tattoos, I think, uh, have memories and uh, have some motivations as well because we have a family tattoo 
we have a tattoo from the Olympic Games, and uh, and that's that's also motivates us. Yeah, we're not gonna take our father to the beach, so yeah, I think it's gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> no island holidays for the Liu family in the near future. Strictly winter. You're really into fashion though. Who's the better dresser? I think we had the really similar style before. And like just the same with we sing with the songs. Like we were listening the same same songs almost. But in these few years, I think we went a different way. And like I I I like more, you know, Harry Styles, that style. I like his style, like losing trousers and like and like shirts and stuff. So, so I I, I moved a little bit, but yeah, we are still pretty similar. I think we have our own style. Shao Ang, uh, you're very diplomatic. You're just nodding there. I, I agree with that and uh, like how he, he, he changed, he, I think he changed, not me. And uh, <laughs> I think uh, how he changed, uh, that's, that's also a pretty good thing. Like he, he colored his hair, I, like he's like 14 or something. He, he's, in, he's in that mood now. Uh, I hope he, he, he will grow, grow up soon and uh, he will change it back. <laughs> <laughs> Grow up soon. Wow, Bob's. Okay, so um, you have two guinea pigs, right? Yes. Why guinea pigs? Uh, first of all, I, I, I wanted to have a pet. And uh, I went to the, the shop, the, the pet shop, and uh, I asked, uh, which one is that animal which you have to care the less? Uh, and uh, they said the guinea pig is like uh, you also can hold it in your hands it's not gonna run away or not gonna bite you you can still you even it. put it in you even put it in your moon bag sometimes yeah or was that just for the photo <laughs> that was just for, for the photo <laughs> but yeah you can just uh, hold it you can play with it with her and um, uh, i didn't know that you have to to have get more because uh, uh in Switzerland, I think they the band uh, or they do, it's not allowed to have only one guinea pig because uh, because they they get uh, sad or they get lonely. Uh, so I bought another one. <laughs> so now they are they are uh, there is two guinea pig and uh, they are happy happy happy, happy piggies. <laughs> Gucci and Fendi. Yeah. And then you did get a doggy as well, right? Yeah, 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 it's my girlfriend's dog, uh, and he's a boy. Uh, he's a real bad boy because uh, he's really naughty and uh, he loves to play. He's a he's a, a bichon, um, and his name is Milo. Milo, Gucci, Fendi. Um, Shalin, your dog's got a funny name. Is it Dinya? Yeah, it's Dinya. It's me, watermelon. Why would you call your dog watermelon? <laughs> Well, it's really funny, like, I don't know, should I tell you the real reason? Because back then I didn't know, like, what was, it was, like, actually, I was, I, we, I had the dog with my ex-girlfriend, and um, we were sitting in a car, we didn't want to give her uh, a, a real name or a person name, and um, we were sitting in a car, and there was, a, there was a song from Harry Styles, Watermelon Sugar High. Ah, yes! Yeah, okay! I, Back then I didn't know what, what, what the song meant, you know? And I was like, what, what would you say if you call her watermelon? <laughs> just, just, so, imagine, just imagine if you lost your dog in the city and you, you go out and start screaming watermelon and everyone just looking at you, what, 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 is, his, what is he doing? Like, what, what's, his problem? what's his problem? Why is he screaming watermelon? <laughs> yeah, and so that, that's, that's one of the reasons as well, like going to the city park and shouting your dog's name, it's funny. Like, but yeah, like she's a, she's a winner dog and she's a, she's a hard necking. So it's like have the, the different colors on her body. And um, yeah, like I was telling people her name is watermelon and her back is looks like a watermelon actually, like from the, from the colors, the different colors. So, so people are asking like, oh, because she looks like a watermelon. I was like, like after I knew what the song was about, I was like, yeah, from there. Yeah, yeah. Time for wrong answers only. Now you're going to have to pay attention, okay? Okay. 
Okay, wrong answers only. Question one, what's your name? Joanne. Caroline. What do you do for a living? I'm a role model. Name something that's green. Apple. Oh, no. oh, no. <laughs> oh you lose. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, come on, yeah. both of you actually. <laughs> Watermelon's also green on the outside. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go again. Let's see who wins this yeah, round. Let's go again. What is it that a cow eats? Yeah. Beef. Oh no. Sorry. <laughs> I'm really mad at this game. <laughs> What is your sporting discipline? Wrong answers only. Go. Mike. Who is a better skater? You or your brother? Me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a trick question because it doesn't objectively have a wrong answer. Does it? No. No. We're on the same okay. level. Yeah. Name a winter Olympic sport. Wrong answers only. Cricket. Wrong answers only. Uh, uh, <laughs> really Simba. <laughs> Simba is what animal? Pig. Cat. Oh, that's too close. Come on. No, but it's, but it's not. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> Name something you wear on your feet. Wrong answers only. And go. Hat. T-shirt. Is a strawberry red? No. <laughs> what color is the sky? Green. <laughs> wow. What do you wear when you're competing in short track? Slippers. <laughs> what sound does a cat make? Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> you skate on what? Feet. Grass. Usain Bolt competes in what event? Grass, no? What event? Hmm. What does Usain Bolt do? What is he famous for? Dancing. Uh, hiking. Name the three colors on a traffic light. Blue. Uh, Blue, black, and white. Gray, brown. And white. I don't know. Brown. Right. That's such a random color to pick for that. <laughs> okay. So this is going to be the most fun of the lot. Uh, only because I have a dark sense of humor. Now it's time to play Would You Rather with the Liu brothers. Would you rather give up your phone for a month or not be allowed to skate for a week? I was actually doing that. I was giving my phone out away, but I was in India. But yeah, it was it was a different different way. It's a tough question, but I would give up my phone. I would give up my phone as well. Why did you give your phone up in India? What were you doing? We were Secret. doing it. Yeah. <laughs> what? Secret. <laughs> no. I'm joking. We were doing a reality show. So oh. we had to give up the phone out. It was silly. Would you rather have more time or more money? More money. More time. I want to see the future. Hmm. Would you rather be able to talk with animals or speak all languages? Oh, that's a good one. Talk to animals. I, it's really hard to choose, you know? I, I have two pigs and one dog. Of course I want to talk with them. <laughs> why, why do you do that to me? <laughs> Both of you can speak three languages already. Yeah, but that's not enough. <laughs> it's more than most. I, I can choose, tell you that. I choose speaking with the, with the animals and he's choosing like speaking every language of the world. <laughs> and then between the two of you, you covered. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. 
Would you rather spend the day with your favorite athlete or with your favorite movie star? Movie star. Movie star. Who? Of course. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Ha. I guess that. <laughs> Sean? Uh, Ryan Reynolds. Oh. Ryan Reynolds. Oh. I like him. Like, he's a good mm-hmm. actor, though. <laughs> and he's funny. Yeah, he's super funny. Yeah. <laughs> Looks like he'd be a cool buddy. Okay, would you rather have one real get out of jail free card or a key that opens any door? A key to open any door. Yeah, a key. I need a key. Would you rather be able to see 10 minutes into your own future or 10 minutes into the future of anyone else? 10 minutes of my future. Anyone else. Why anyone else? I don't know. I'm not selfish. Oh. Okay. Would you rather have unlimited international first class plane tickets or never ever have to pay for food at restaurants again? First class tickets. Yeah, first class because we don't have to pay for food now <laughs> in <Ooh>. the restaurants. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Would you rather be forced to dance every time you heard music or be forced to sing along to every song you hear? Why do you need force for that? I always do that. <laughs> do both. I, I would sing, yeah. Would you rather have whatever you're thinking appear above your head for all of us to see or have absolutely everything you do live streamed for anyone to see? I think I would live stream. Why? 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 What, what is this question, though? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course, the sec, the second one. The second one. You don't want your thoughts to appear yeah. right here. <laughs> it would be too messy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, you guys did phenomenally well. Thank you. Congratulations. It has been so cool to hang out with the two of you. Um, and I'm so inspired and excited for all the great things you guys are still going to do. Um, have you got a message uh, for your fans, Shalin? Maybe you can kick off. Thank you. And it was, it was nice to meet you. And hopefully one day we're going to meet in person. And my message would be like, just fight for your dreams. Like, if you've seen this, if you've seen this show, like, we are all fighting together. And like, you never give up on your dreams. So we made it and anyone can make it. Thank you for uh, having us today. And uh, I just want to say one thing to, to the fans. Uh, I really hope they can see us uh, on the track, uh, on the ice again really, really soon and uh, they can cheer for us as well. Excellent. Thank you so much, guys. It has been my honor. And um, thank you for leading the way. Uh, that you have and uh, for inspiring so many people. Thank you. Thank you so much.